Hello everybody, we're going to get started with Crossroads, which is a JavaScript routing system. A very simple library specifically focused on one thing, which is routing. And we're going to use that in our JavaScript application, especially because this helps us to create larger, more organized enterprise type JavaScript applications. Crossroads is comparable to Require.js in that both of them are relevant when you're creating enterprise, in other words, larger JavaScript applications. Require.js provides modularity and Crossroads provides routing. We're going to see how that works by means of an example that's provided in this blog. And you see what you have here. So here we have two routes. And so if there is just a slash, then we'll load the main page. If there's a slash user slash some user ID, then we'll load the details page. So you can see that via JavaScript, we can point to a particular HTML page that we want to load. And you can see that um, if one of these routes are not matched, then we're going to have an error message displayed. You also see here that we'll have a hash in the URL, and this is going to be parsed here and once the parsing is done, this routing functionality is set up. Um, and we have some code here for reading the URL and, uh, and dividing up what is in there via the hash that we will have in the, in the URL. So uh, without further ado, let's switch to NetBeans. And we're going to create a simple new application. We'll call it My Enterprise App. And we'll click next and next again. And we want to use Bower. So we have Bower here. Now, as you can see in the explanation here, we don't need simply crossroads. We also need signal, JS signals. This is the only dependency of the crossroads framework, and we need that, and it needs to be registered before crossroads. Okay, let's go to our application, to properties, to Bower. We'll open the browser at the same time. And we will now look, first of all, for Crossroads. We search for it. So there's Crossroads JS. This is what we need. We say add, and we also wanted JS signals. And we search for that. And here's JS signals, and we click add. We click OK. So now Bower is run automatically, and you can see that in the Bower file here we have registered crossroads and signals automatically because of what's just been done in the properties dialog. And here they both are. And now we'll get started with our index page. So we said that signals must be here before. Crossroads. So let's first of all get signals. So here's signals. Let's look again. So signals first and then crossroads. So let's look for crossroads. And here it is. Crossroads. And let's already run the application. Okay, so everything seems to be good at this point. Also useful as a network monitor. So right now what's failed is the fav icon. That's okay, no problem there. So um, let's do a little bit of work. We're going to create our app file. So a new JavaScript file called app. Uh, let's not put it there. Let's put it in the site root. Okay. And back in our page here, we just drag the app file and we've registered that one too. Uh, okay, so we're good to go. Um, we will just delete all this stuff. Right, um, now back to our example. So we'll just take this stuff here and copy and paste it. So here is the content. And we copy and paste it into our app file. Okay, there's some garbage here that we're just going to delete. So 
So this tells us we need jQuery, so we're going to include uh, jQuery as well. We don't have jQuery right now. Uh, so we add jQuery. We search for it. And there's jQuery. That should be fine. So now Bower is run automatically. And what do we have? Hooray, we have jQuery. So we go back to our index page. Just close the rest. And open our browser again. So um, let's stick jQuery in there. And let's see if we have the ordering right. Run the application again. Output. Uh, crossroads is not defined. Okay, so we have the wrong order here. Um, oh wait, we have our app file. So this is a little bit of trick, a bit of moving things around. Uh, signal needs to be there. Signal needs to be there. And jQuery. Okay. Things are looking good. We've moved things around. Fab icon failed several times. Okay, here we are. Um, now, let's take a look at the code in our app JavaScript. So, via jQuery, we're saying here that there is going to be a route content. So, there's going to be a div here. We'll call it div, div ID equals route content. And so this is going to be replaced. So we we'll say to be replaced. And um, route content. And it will be replaced on the slash with main HTML. Now we can already see that there's a failure here because main HTML, an attempt has been made to load main HTML when we saved here. As soon as we specified the ID of the div, we said it has to be write content, which means that main HTML has been attempted uh, to be loaded, and it doesn't exist, so we we'll say main. So here we go, and we'll put in some text here, main, and we'll put some text here, main, and control S to save. And we'll just refresh the browser, and there we can see now there's a 200 status main has been loaded, and you can see that here it is. So, okay, so now um, we have the story with the hash. So, there should be a hash, and then user and user ID. So, let's go in here and put in our hash. So, it's hash. And then, not this stuff, but user and an ID, one, two, three, let's say. I press enter, and you can see here that what failed to load was user slash details, which is exactly what you would expect because we don't have that yet. So let's do that. We'll create another one, call it details, and put it into a folder called user. And here we go, and here again we'll put details, and copy this guy down here, details, control S. Okay, so now let's refresh the browser, and you can see details. That's exactly what you would expect. Now we're going to try one more of the routes, and this route is the one that you will see if there is a failure. So in the console we should see an, a message but this seems to be a dead end. So that'll be something different. And wait, let's not do it like that. We're going to say we want to see a page called dead end under these circumstances. So I have this, I press save. And immediately I can see when we refresh the browser. Oh, of course, we don't have anything that's a dead end yet. So let's, this is something that doesn't match any of our routes. And we can see in the network monitor that an attempt was made to load dead end. Um, and that failed. 
which is why we now have uh, this. And here you can see also that this seems to be a dead end. That's our message in the console that we see here. That, that seems okay. So let's clear out this stuff and let's uh, put something else there again. Uh, blah. Refresh the browser. And there you can see. Uh, here you can see, blast seems to be a dead end. Okay, so let's again go in here and change this to foo. Refresh the browser, and you can see foo seems to be a dead end. And again, the dead end page did not load a few times now. So let's create that dead end page. Here's a dead end page. And we'll put dead end here. And we'll put dead end there. And then we will refresh the browser. And we can see dead end. So what uh, Crossroads, together with its dependency Signal.js, provides you is a mechanism for setting up a routing strategy for your JavaScript application, which is especially useful when you are creating larger JavaScript applications, in other words, enterprise applications. A nice, neat routing strategy is provided by the library Crossroads in combination with JS Signals, which is a dependency, and you can combine it with other libraries. Uh, in this case, you saw in combination with jQuery. That's it, a brief introduction to routing in JavaScript with NetBeans.